All right, we are live. What's going on, people? We're here today, if you're just joining in, celebrating 2,000 subscribers. And as, as you may have heard in, in previous streams or whatnot, the numbers don't mean much to me. It's, it's more I'd rather depth rather than width. I'm excited to be here. I just finished a workout, so I'll probably be, I'll be a little bit sweaty and my hands a bit messed up. I'm running a laugh. Um, so after this live stream, I'm gonna go, gonna go relax. But the purpose of me being here is to answer some of the questions I get asked most often. And also, if, if anyone wants to ask anything in the chat, I, I don't know where it is on the screen, but I believe it's, it's somewhere over here. You can post away and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So I'll start that off. I'll put in, hey everyone. Ask me anything to celebrate. But I've got a list of questions here that I've uh, I've collected over the past few weeks. There we go. Bunny, how are you, man? I'm really good. Thanks for tuning in, my friend. How are you? What's cracking, Shaheed? You made it to a stream. <laughs> Had an awesome day today, actually. I um. I was at a real estate event with, with one of my good friends, Steve Carroll. He was hosting it. It's about teaching real estate agents uh, how, to, how to get involved in the digital landscape. So essentially, how to use the digital tools that we all we all know and love, like Facebook, LinkedIn, to, to make the most of, of what they can do, make the most of their skill set. And I think, I think all of us could, could, could use them uh, in a better way. Well, not in a better way, but but to gain more value out of the world, right? This it's such a great time to be alive with the internet, with with everything. That's why I'm so pumped up to be here. Oh my god! Hey, Varan, nice to meet you, my friend. What's going on today here in India? Celebrate Rakhi Badan means Happy Sisters Day. Oh, I don't have any sisters. Uh, actually, I have two puppies, but they're not here. Um, they're they're two girl dogs, but but they're not in the room. I have three brothers. But happy. How am I saying it? Rakhi Bandhan. All right, so we're going to jump straight into it. Um, if you want to ask anything, post post it in the chat. I'll get to it as, as soon as I can. I'll be acknowledging everyone who, who comes in. Raksha Bandhan. Azari, how are you, my friend? Hi, Daniel. I'd like to ask about your opinion on how to study computer vision that is, that is applied on self-driving car. That's a really good question. Azari, I think I, I'm not sure in the, the self-driving car specific domain, but I did find um, a really, really great, like I'm talking one of the best blogs I've ever seen on computer vision as a whole. And I actually used it the other day. I went through one of the tutorials and um, I, I went through it step by step. And the code, the code is, it, it's it's beautiful, and at the same time, he's the, the author has annotated it so well that he goes through each thing step by step. I'm actually thinking of buying the book that he's published on computer vision um, because it was that good. So I'll I'll put that in the. I don't know if you can put links in here, but if you Google Pi Image Search, now again, I'm not sure if it's for self-driving cars, but PiImageSearch.com, I believe, is the blog. Um, check that out. It's one of the best best resources I've ever seen for computer vision. He's partnered, the guy is partnered with people um, from, from all different companies. Um, well, sorry, he's got a PhD in computer vision and people from, from top tier companies, um, they're escaping me now, but, but but imagine as high as Apple, use his website to, to learn computer vision. So so I, I got some great, great, great uh, information from that. I'm gonna get my hair out of the way. There we go. Cause that was, that was annoying me, that little fluffy bit. Um, Sheikh, yeah, they, they use open, he uses open CV, he uses Keras, all different types of, of, um, of computer vision libraries. And how's the audio guys? Can you hear me? If, if anyone's having trouble hearing, just put it in the, in the comments. I've got a, got a mic, but I don't think the mic's working. I think it's just the headphones, but we'll get that. We don't, we don't mind. We'll, as long as it's working, we'll, we'll keep going with the punches. Um, so I've got a list of questions here. Um, we're gonna we're gonna jump straight into one of the first ones, and it's it's on fitness. So so my domain at the moment is health and fitness, right? Health, fitness, and technology. They're the three things I love most in this world, and so I love co combining them together. I love learning. I love sharing what I learn, and my goal is to combine technology and health uh, at some point to to just I think technology can 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 help people be healthier. 
right? Um, and I mean, we don't need technology to be healthy. We've got everything we need, but it just, I, my mom told me a story when I was like six years old about robo man and robo woman, and I've loved it ever since. So now I want to combine technology with the body. All right. So the first question is, how did I lose fat and gain muscle? Now, we're going to get into to a bunch of different topics. So if you have something to ask, leave it in the comments and I'll, and I'll get to that. Um, but we're going to do health, fitness and technology and um, data science and machine learning and everything, anything under the sun. How do I lose fat and gain muscle? Well, I grew up as an overweight teenager throughout high school. And uh, I was very body conscious. I, I didn't go through puberty to a late age. When I was in high school, I, I would see all these other, other people in, in my school getting changed and they had hair under their armpits. And I'm like, oh, I don't have hair under my armpits. I was like 15, 16, 17, something like that. And I was, I was a little bit chubby, never, never too really heavy. But then one day out of high school, I started, I started to realize, hold on, I want to change this. I don't want to be overweight anymore. I want to be health and health healthy. I want to be able to run around. I want to. I want to have six pack abs. And it was a, it was a TV episode of The Biggest Loser, which is uh, a, a show in Australia. And I'm not sure if the chat just went went bye bye. So, are we still live? Okay, the chat's back. Um, it's a show in Australia around the world about people who go on who are overweight and lose weight. And I watched that. I watched an episode of that and it motivated me. And the next morning I got up and I went, I went for a run. Well, not a run, but I, I walked up and down, up and down the hill, which was a big thing for me, right? I was like a couch potato. And then it was that, that kick started the journey. But it wasn't, it wasn't until about 2011 when I first got to, to university and I started to, to meet girls. And I'm like, oh, I, I want to I wanna talk to girls. So I really started working out to get more confident to, to talk to girls. And then after a while, it turned into something, something totally different. Right? And I was, I was getting frustrated over not seeing results fast enough. I was trying all different diets. But then I realized, hold on, this bettering my health can benefit every other part of my life, not just talking to girls. And so that's when the obsession started. And once the obsession started, um, it, it wasn't, it was no longer hard. It was just like, this is what I do every day now. It was, um, it was I, I eat well, I work out every day, and I, I work towards my goals. And once I started getting healthier, everything else started to get better. My studies got better. When I first was in university, I failed the first two years, right? I failed them by biomed. I had to meet with the head of the science faculty to, to tell him why I should stay in university, right? And it was partially because I was studying something I wasn't really interested in. And it was partly because I was a lazy teenager. But then once I started to get in, involved in health and fitness outside of uni, I realized, hold on, I can study what I'm interested in at university. Then I switched to nutrition and the journey began. I signed up for my first bodybuilding competition, which was, which was kind of nerve wracking. I had to get on stage and, and pose with, with, with tan and whatnot. I don't really like the fake tan part of it, but it was a good experience. And it, it, was, it was a hard journey. But once, once, you get, once you find your reason for doing something, then you can relate every hard task back to that reason. And once it gets hard, you remind yourself why you started in the first place. And that's that's something I repeat a lot, right? Why you started in the first place. And so how did I lose fat and gain muscle? It was consistency over time. I started going to the gym. I started eating better. I started sleeping better. I still have to work on that. Technology distracts me too much. I, I love it so much. But they're the three main things you can take care of. Movement, nutrition, sleep. They're the three pillars of health. Don't ignore everything else if you're just getting started. Movement, exercise, no, sorry, movement, nutrition, sleep. If you can take care of those, then you're in a good place to start getting healthy. And then just keep the momentum going, right? Consistency, consistency, consistency. Every single day, if you can, walk, lift weights, eat well, and the results will come over time. I've been working out for seven years and look, I still got, still got, I could get bigger arms, you know. <laughs> All right, we might go into the into the the chat. What do we have here? Perfect. Thank you for for checking the audio. We have 
Bunny, I wanted to learn machine learning translation and translate to in English to suggest some resources, tutorials. Um, I, I've only done a couple of projects on machine translation. One was on, on French as a part of the deep learning nano degree. And the other one was a part of Andrew Ong's deep learning.ai. I'll put that, I'll put that in the chat as well. So deep learning. AI. I don't know if it'll link, but there, that is one of the best courses on, on deep learning for, for machine translation. I think the last model there, the last course, so course five, which is sequence models, is specifically around machine translation. And because because machine translation is just a sequence of words to another sequence of words, right? That's that's what module five takes care of is, is sequence models. And we're here. Robert. Love your Sudoku video, man. Great stuff. Hey, cheers, Rob. Thanks for the kind words, my friend. Thank you. Um, Clashy, what work do you do and how much do you get paid tentatively? Um, Clashy, I'm, I'm currently, uh, I get paid to be a machine learning engineer at, at Max Kelston, which is a technology company in my in my home city in Brisbane, which is amazing. We, we are working on some awesome projects. You can check it out, maxkelston.com. Um, otherwise, on LinkedIn, at, if you go to, LinkedIn.com slash my name, you'll see the, you should see the company. Um, just search Daniel Burke LinkedIn, it'll it'll come up. Um, Max Kelson, we, we work on, so so we primarily work with with big data. So um, or we do we do an eclectic group of things: web development, design, and machine learning, data science. And so we partner with with companies. My team, which is the machine learning team. Um, we partner with other companies and and help them get get the best out of their data. Figure out figure out how they can use it. Figure out what machine learning models are best to to use for their for their information to bring more value. Whether it be to increase sales or whether it be to to optimize one of their pipelines. Um, our next big project is working on uh, genomics, so whole human genomes. And we're going to be trying to figure out how to use artificial intelligence to analyze whole human genomes or the patterns in genomes to figure out um, a diagnostic diagnostic tool for cancer treatments. So stay tuned for that. I'll be I'll be sharing a lot of work around that through the form of blog posts and and videos and 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 everything you can imagine. That's that's the that's a three year project coming out soon. Um, and oh, how much do I get paid? Um, I'm happy to share that with you. I just I'm not gonna not gonna put it out publicly. So send me a message on on Telegram, and I can share that with you. Um, I just yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that publicly, but I'm happy to happy to share it with you. Um, my Telegram link is in there. T.me slash Mr. D Burke. Anyone can message me. By the way, um, that's that'll get straight to me. Um, the finite investor. I started learning machine learning more about AI, ML coding recently. Some periods are okay, some are great and tough. How much of the math is important? And most, what are the most important foundations in your opinion? Yeah, definitely, definitely the finite investor. It's it's it gets tough, right? And that's where I say, um, starting with with your why, right? So my why behind it was I I left Apple. And I was working there for three years and I wanted to start building the technologies I was servicing and selling. And I wanted to combine it with my love for, for health and, and fitness. And so um, what I spent a year studying Monday to Friday and driving Uber on the weekends. And so my why was I want to get into this industry. Uh, I need to get into it. And so that's what I kept reminding myself was when the study got hard, I just remember I don't want to keep driving Uber forever. I want to to get in and I want to start using these technologies to to build awesome things and, and bring value to the world. And so make sure your your reason for studying is is A1, right? And then if if you're finding a certain topic hard, one of the best things, one of the best things that you can do is to to find different methods of explaining that and what do i mean by that so say it's a math topic and you're finding uh you're reading something on linear algebra what what you can do is remix the same topic by going to different sources so so you might have a book you might have a series of youtube videos and you might have khan academy and you might even have a coursera course all on the same same topic so just different ways of explaining something that is that's a sticking point for you that's what helps me personally some things i learn great reading from a book 
Some things I learn better watching a video. Other things I learn going through through a tutorial. It's just all about figuring out what works best for you. And then as a final step to that, if you do find something really hard, try teach it. Right? It, it, it might you might think it's in reverse, but when you try to explain it to someone else, even if you're not explaining it to anyone, just write up like a, a an article in your notes of of how you would explain the thing you're having trouble with to someone else. You don't have to share it. If you if you if you if it turns out that way that it's a good method, you think it's worth sharing, then then post it out by all means. Then you're building authority in that domain. So so there there are a few things you, you can try, and the most important foundations. Um, from my personal experience, math hasn't played a big part. Reason being yet, because a lot of the stuff we've been working on, we've been able to use frameworks um, and existing libraries such as Python, Pandas, NumPy, TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, all of the above, and you manipulate them in a way that serves our purpose. So that's, that's my experience, right? Um, however, we are working on some research projects, aka um, Pomerman, which is a reinforcement learning project. If you go to pomerman.com, I'll put that in the chat as well, pomerman.com. It's a reinforcement learning competition. And what I'm finding is that there's a, a large math component that I'm, I'm trying to get around. Um, and it, it, so what are the most important foundations? Well, it's gonna differ from problem to problem, but there are a few things that, that I think are fundamental, right? It's, it's code. So, so get, get as familiar as you can with Python. That's my personal favorite. Um, and it seems it's Max Kelson, we're a Python shop, right? We, we use Python for everything. And it seems that the majority of, of the field of machine learning that I've been exposed to uses Python. So get really familiar with Python, um, know the structure of a machine learning problem. Um, and another thing that people sometimes forget is, is be able to manipulate a data set, right? So, so pick a topic of your interest. This is actually a really good project to work on. Pick a topic of your interest, right? Anything, find some data around that. I mean, there's a lot of open source data sets on the internet now. Pick a topic of your interest. You've got the data set here. And now take your, your Python skills, your Python, Pandas, and NumPy, and apply that to the data set, manipulate that in a way that you can draw something out of that, and then apply machine learning techniques to this. And the bonus round is collating all of that information you've learned, putting it into a blog post of some sort, and, and sharing it online as a tutorial, because that, that builds authority in, in that domain. So your interest, whatever it is, for me, it would be health. I apply machine learning to that. And I'm still yet to do this. So hold me, hold me to it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to the USA in, in two weeks. So I probably won't be doing it over there. But when I get back, before the end of the year, I'm going to have multiple tutorials out. So hold me to this, right? I want you all to message me on Telegram and say, Daniel, where the hell is your tutorials? Um, so hold me to this. But yeah, that's what I was saying. Apply it to your interest build a tutorial around the knowledge you've learned and use that as a project you've worked on. Even if it fails, even if it fails, it's still a good thing because you will learn and you will learn how to communicate. Those are foundations of, of anything, is learning how to look at a problem and learning how to communicate a problem. And that's very hard to teach in any course. It's only It only comes by exposing yourself to things you, you haven't, you haven't, um, you haven't tried before. So I hope that answers your question. All right, we're going to go to to one pre-made one that I promised I would answer, and then we'll go back to the chat. Um, Varun from LinkedIn asked me how to get started with machine learning effectively. I have gone through many such posts, answers, and discussions on Reddit, and also tried machine learning with Andrew Ung's course, Siraj Ravar's channel. That was a year ago. Now I feel like I need to go through the content on order again and again. So rather asking how to learn machine learning, how do you get started more effectively in a way such that leaves an impact? Whoa, that's a big question, right? So we're gonna I'm gonna sum that up to how do I get started with machine learning effectively? And I'm gonna front this question with with I don't know, right? Because I I don't know the best way for everyone. I only know what what I've done. So I'm not going to pretend like I know it all and, and I've this is the this is the way you should do everything. Um, I can only speak from from what I've tried. 
So I've, I've only been learning for a year too, and I feel like I'm just getting started. A big thing for me was to realize that, that this, this kind of learning, what, what we're doing is, is not a short process, right? If, if you've been going for a year, that's, that's, that's great. Right? You, you, you won't, there's no way to become, if you've heard of the, the 10,000 hour rule, it, gets, it gets, gets thrown around a lot. But, but don't worry about the number. The number's arbitrage. An easy one to remember is 10 years. If you've been doing something for 10 years and you haven't improved, well, then you've got a problem. But if you do something for one year, the good thing is you can think about what you've been doing and then go back to where you're most weak and think about what's holding you back the most and going forward. So for me, at the moment, it's, it's simply being able to manipulate a data set in the way I can use machine learning algorithms with. So think about the journey of learning machine learning, artificial intelligence, math, anything as a, as a 10 year journey rather than something you can do in a year. Like these technologies are not new. The media and, and the internet it shows them as being the latest and greatest things. Of course they are. They are amazing. That's why I got into it. That's why I'm so excited. But I've been doing it for, for a year now, and I still feel like I'm just getting started. Now, what can you do? What are some, some actionable steps? Like, Dan, yeah, I know it's a long-term journey, but I, I, I want to get some progress. Okay. I read a great answer on Quora, and I, I'm going to – Actually, there's a Slack channel. Shaikh's going to link the Slack channel. I'll link the answer on Quora that I read, which is really great to this. Um, I'll, I'll put the Slack channel in the description or something if it can't go in the chat, but Shaikh has the link to it. Message me on Telegram if you need the direct link because I think links don't work in chat. Think about learning something like this, right? There's papers that come out every single day on new machine learning topics and, and new state-of-the-art ways of doing things and, and new, 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 all right? Of course, staying up, up to date with that is great, but it can, it can wear you down. It can be like, oh, I'm not keeping up with all this new stuff, right? And I've, I've felt that. I read a new article. I'm like, I, I got to learn that. I got to learn that. But that can hold you back right? Think about what are the fundamentals of machine learning, right? What are the principles that you can learn? What are the foundational skills that you can use for the next 10 years? So what's that? That's statistics, that's probability, that's math, that's coding, right? These things take a long time to learn, but will be relative for, for decades to come, okay? Um, unless, unless some fundamental shift happens in the universe, which is unlikely and physics gets unwound, the, the statistics and the, the, the math, like linear algebra, calculus, um, that, that machine learning is built on won't be changing anytime soon. So get familiar with, pro, as familiar as you can with, with, the, with the fundamentals and think long term rather than just, just, just what, what can I do next week, right? So it, it, it's hard, but... That's that's what's gonna that's what's gonna push you forward in in the end. And I know I've contradicted myself. I said in the start, what what have I experienced? What are the most important foundationals? I, I've kind of skipped over the fact of of math, but it's gonna be situational, right? If you're thinking really long term, see, my goal is not necessarily to be the the best machine learning engineer because I know people are going to be better than me at at the hardcore engineering stuff. Where I can bring the most value, and I think this is this is important for everyone to try and try and realize, and it's it's a long process as well. Where I think I can bring the most value is being the translator. Now, what does that mean? So I would be the person who who communicates with the engineers as well as the end user, right? So I can talk to the engineers on a technical level, and I can also talk to a customer about the project that we're working on. So to sum that up. How do you get started with machine learning effectively? Think long term, right? So, so think long term and short term at the same time. What does that mean? Well, long term, you're being very patient with what you're trying to do. You, at short term, you're trying new things and you, you, you're, you're learning as fast as you can. But at the same time, you're remaining patient because you know you're on a long journey, not, not just the journey for, for next week. That's, that's what I can, I can recommend to learn machine learning effectively. Your second question was, can I learn machine learning with C++? 
Um, I've never used C++, so I, I can't answer that question. I'm, I'm strictly Python, but I'm sure there's probably some way to learn machine learning in C++. Um, all right, now we're going to go back, back to the chat. Whoa, it's exploded. Thank you so much. Do you use anything other than Python from Finite Investor? Um, no, I, we only strictly use Python at Max Kelson, and I've strictly used Python. Iterating is where I'm at now. Code Academy, CS50 is a great course. Z Shore is, is awesome as well. Vivek, I finished the Artificial Intelligence Foundation and degree. Which should I choose now, machine learning or deep learning? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Vivek, it depends, it depends, right? So what are your goals? Um, deep learning is is probably the, um, the, the, the tip of the iceberg for, for data science and, and machine learning problems. If I was to go back um, and choose, I haven't done the machine learning now degree, but I'd probably, I'd probably give that a try um, before the deep learning now degree, unless the problem you want to work on in, in the next, let's say, year involves deep learning, and that was going to require some research on your behalf. Yay, Penguin Pacific, remember me? Josh? Hey brother, nice to nice to see you again. The ten thousand hours rule has some flaws, but I think yeah, of course, all rules all rules have have some flaws. If you well, except for except for hardcore physics and whatnot, but even that could probably get blown away by future AIs. Um, but yeah, of course, it makes some general sense. It's just a it's just a way of saying it's essentially a way of saying be patient, continue the journey, and Im small improvements over time. Your first hour won't be as good as your 10,000th hour. Um, programming with S with Sid. Oh, hey, Daniel. Can you please make a guy on how to study more efficiently? Also, you don't you, don't you get distracted studying at home? Um, yeah, sure. That's a great idea. Um, the, the number one thing for me not to be distracted is I'm, I'm breaking my own rule here is taking this device and putting it putting it in another room in another drawer boom and there's a setting on my mac where where i can turn on do not disturb that's permanently on um so so sid has asked how do you study uh more efficiently and how do i not get distracted number one phone away number two all notifications are turned off on my computer i don't get a single notification number three um, I do batching. What does that mean? So I do certain tasks in groups throughout the day. So the morning, I like to have a maker schedule. And what does maker mean? Well, uh, morning I, means I, I, a maker means I, I create something in the morning. So that may be um, doing a coding project or that may be um, doing, doing some lectures from a course or that may be making a YouTube video or something like that. I'm, I'd be creative in the morning. and then in the afternoon or in the late late evening when I'm when I'm tired and not as physically not as mentally active I, I have a manager schedule and what does manager mean well that means I, I get back to things like like small little tasks I like to call them like email um, comments LinkedIn posts um, social media uh, anything anything that's small tiny little tasks right but in the morning I take care of the biggest tasks and I, I use a notepad which is not here oh actually Boom. So what have I said? Phone away, uh, notifications off. Um, I set a timer, 25 minute timer. I do 25 minute blocks of study, five minute break. In the five minute break, I go for a walk. Um, I do a maker manager schedule. So the morning I will, I will create things. And in the evening, I will take care of little tasks that I have to do. Um, YouTube comments, emails, uh, LinkedIn, and not that YouTube comments are little things because because I love it. I love it when you guys comment and and I, it, I feel so humble that I get to reply and, and talk to you all. But another thing is I keep a, a like a, a track of what I do um, throughout the day. So every morning, every single morning, I'll write down six things I want to do, and this this notebook keeps going. Six things I want to do. So this day, look, I didn't get done some of the things I wanted to do. But this is more than six, so that's a that's a lie. But I, I start the page with the date, and then I put a, a list of things that I want to do. This is every morning, by the way, and this is like a, a check, like a diary. And then down here, I write down random thoughts. So what does this one? So this was the nineteenth of August, and so there's some comics. Um, it just literally says I'm up to reading about immunotherapy and why it matters. 
Um, the crossover of technology, business, research is where it's at. There you go. Note to self. The crossover of technology, business, and research is where it's at. So there are a few things I do, um, Sid, to, to study more efficiently, but I that's a great idea. I will write a, a blog post and do a video on on my my top study tips. Um, I'll try and make it make it nice and short so you can you can study most effectively. But thank you for the question. Robert Porter, just wondering how much you paid for the course with the Sudoku challenge in it. Robert, um, that was the deep learning now degree. I believe, oh, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but I think the nano degree was about, let's say 600 Australian dollars. So maybe 500 US dollars, but I think it has changed price since I did it. So, so please don't quote me on that, but it was a Udacity deep learning nano degree. Um, Edette, what books do you recommend for machine learning? Oh, so many great ones. Um, the only one that comes to mind for now is, is um, oh, what is it? Uh, Deep Learning with Python by Francis, Francis Cholet. Um, that's, a, that's an incredible book. Um, Azari asked me, can you tell me more about your diet? And, and I'm, I'm right at the top of the chat, and I know there's a lot more questions, but, but we'll, we'll try to get to a lot of them. Azari, what's my diet? So my diet is, is whole foods um as much as possible so i avoid things with multiple ingredients what does that mean um so i eat things like meats uh, plants fruits vegetables nuts oils um but but stay away from seed oils like um canola oil uh, so olive oil coconut oil they're great they're great oils i stay with them and i avoid refined carbohydrates so so no no breads no wraps um Anything, anything that's been processed, right? So if I can't, if I couldn't grow the thing that I'm about to eat in my backyard, and I know there's there's going to be season, seasonal things and weather and whatnot that affects things, um, but if I couldn't grow the food I'm about to eat in my backyard, I avoid it. So so that's that's my whole philosophy, and and otherwise, sometimes I, I break the rules, right? You, it's it's life, but 99% of the time I stick to that. All right, let's get to let's get to some more down here. Here we are. Sandeep, congrats, man. Thank you so much. Um, what do you think about Microsoft Machine Learning certification? Um, I I've never done a Microsoft certify certification, so I can't comment on it for sure. But I actually love Microsoft, right? So um, we've we've looked at some of their their APIs and whatnot for what we've worked on at Max Kelson. I've I'm actually probably going to buy some Microsoft stock later this year. That's how much I love Microsoft. So um, if they're offering a certification, well, it, it would definitely be something to look into. I'm personally doing a Google Cloud Platform um, machine learning certification. So so. I know Microsoft's cloud is is I think more a bit more advanced than Google's. Well, not advanced, but a bit more market share. So so that may help. But but definitely, um, it it can if if you have those type of certifications, it can be great on a on a resume or something like that. It really depends on on what your goal is 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 having that certification. Do you want to to use that to 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 prove your credentials in something? Or is that certification a part of a course that that you're learning um, some some skills that you're going to apply in your in your day to day life? It, it it really depends. A lot of a lot of what Google, Microsoft, and Amazon offer in terms of certification is quite similar um, in terms of like reputability and quality of courses. Now, who we have the Fine Vista. They have more growth recently, but this stuff, Turing. Oh wow, it just jumped jumped a bunch of a bunch of chat questions. Bear with me, guys. I'm getting to it. Major shot. Um, I'm studying math and engineering at QUT in Brisbane. Oh, hey, man. I was just at QUT today. I was at a, at a conference. That's awesome. Nice to meet you, my friend. And thinking of majoring in statistics and software engineering as a path into working machine learning. Is that a good pathway in the field? Um, I... I I, as I said, I can't comment on those sort of questions because I don't know the best pathway. But anything to do with math and statistics, I know the technology companies that that, that I work with and that that we're we're loosely associated with. So so what I mean by loosely associated with is is 
is uh, we, we kind of we work in a similar similar geographical area. I know that they're after people who are who are doing electrical engineering, uh, mathematics majors, statistics, of course. If you know if you can combine some some programming with the the statistical knowledge, like statistical programming, then you're gonna you're gonna be able to bridge into machine learning very very easily, I believe. Um, but but any kind of pathway with with electrical, math, physics, um, statistical, computer science uh, are all in big demand. And what's what's more important, I think, is is it's not only having the skills, but being able to communicate them. So if you can if you can combine that, so so being able to 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 use your skills on something and then tell someone how you you did that, that's a great way to get into the the field. Don't don't forget communication. Um, what do I think about the potential of quantum computing? Oh my god! Oh my god! Quantum computing. Um, I, uh, it's it's hard to even fathom, right? It's hard to fathom because computing power right now is is so is so amazing. Like it's so so much more advanced than than what we had only a few decades ago. Like a snapshot in time, and look how much we've done. This this whole thing that we're doing right now would not be possible without the computing advancements. Um, so quantum computing is, it's unfathomable. I heard the, the, the number one encryption type, which is SHA-256, maybe something around that, but, but just say the top encryption type, military grade, all that, all that jazz, is quantum computing can break it in seven seconds or something like that. So, so what would take a, a state of the art, like the best computer in the world right now, 120,000 years or something, takes quantum computing seven seconds. So, so that's gonna that's gonna prove a big problem for things like cryptocurrency and and privacy and whatnot. But as I like, imagine AI running on that. It's going to be insane. And I think Moore's law runs out at like 2029 or something like that. These are all facts that I'm just pulling loosely from, from articles that I've read in the past. So don't take them as gospel. Um, but Moore's law running out in 2029 is going to be interesting too because um, that means the rate of, of silicon, like computer computing power, won't necessarily be doubling every year. So we're going to have to get quantum in, into, the, into the game somehow. And so, so whenever that comes about, who who knows what the world's going to be like? Um, here we go. Uh, Jake, what do you think of brain computing? Oh, my boy. <laughs> yeah, brain computing interface from Neuralink. I don't know too much about brain computer interface computing, but my uh, computing, I've said computing twice there, but my, a colleague of mine, Athen, who's our machine learning lead, is very interested in this. He actually wants to build a headset when he has time because he's 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 working on a lot of things right now. So so when he has his own time, he, he he's an electrical engineer and computer scientist. Um, so he wants to work on a on a thought to text piece of hardware. So you could put this like a like a, a neural like a hat essentially, and it would be able to translate your thoughts into text. So that that is flipping amazing, and um, I'm I'm all for that sort of stuff like Neuralink. Um, I think it's the way to go. Like, well, not the way to go, but I, I will eventually get there at some point, right? And and that just fascinates me. Back to the story I said at the start of the stream was was my my mum telling me when I was six years old. I still I remember this story so vividly. I must have been so compelled. It was telling me about robotic this man who got injured and they replaced his body parts with with robotic limbs if you look it up six million dollar man it's an old tv series i've never watched it but i just remember the story from from my mom and i think that's that's where we're eventually going to get right is is merging ourselves with technology we all we already kind of are like this this thing and i know i'm bringing it out it's a distraction again is is becoming our second brain so the next step is to incorporate this like in a, in a contact lens, and then the next step after that, it'd be um, making it seamless, right? So, so I don't think it's it's too much to 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 sort of push away to to think about in in fifteen years time. Look how far that things come in ten years. In fifteen years time, we might actually or 15, 20, 30, whatever the number, whatever the number really doesn't matter. But in our lifetime, if you're watching this in our lifetime, and I really hope it does, because that'd be flipping awesome have some kind of, of chip in our brain that just turns our intelligence up to a 11 and then we're really cooking with gas. 
but but Neuralink, I support everything Elon Musk does. I'm a really big fan. Um, R versus Python. I'm a Python guy. R has its own use cases. Um, neither one's better than the other, but just choose something that you're going to start with. Um, thanks a lot, Daniel. Also, how to connect with you on Telegram and Slack. Um, T.me slash Mr. D, D. Burke is me on Telegram. And you can message me anytime. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, we have a Slack group, Shaikh. Um, shaikh has got the link for that. I don't have it handy for me. So it should be in the chat. If not, message me on Telegram, t.me slash Mr. D. Burke. I'll send it to you. Um, here we go. Programming with Sid. Hey, Daniel, can you please make a guide? Oh, wait, I've, I've been down here. Go Python. Go to Udacity for Python. What other courses, sources for machine learning other than Coursera and Udacity? Um, there was a massive article just published on on Medium. I've got it bookmarked, actually. So again, send me, send me it. I'll put it in the description. Send me a message on Telegram. I'll send you the link of 200, something like that, free machine learning courses that apparently this guy has checked out. And it's one of the most read articles on Medium with 180,000 views or something. And he just updated it. So there's a 2017 version that was really popular. And now there's a 2018 version for, 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 for things to learn. Where did I study? Um, major shot. I studied my undergraduate at UQ. I did a Bachelor of Science there, failed the first two years, took five years to do a three-year degree. And then outside of that, um, I, I learned in this bedroom. I learned, I've got how many videos, 100 videos or something of me studying in this bedroom um, and online for, for everything else. So I've learned outside of that Bachelor of Science degree. And that's, that's how I think I'll keep it from now on. I don't have any plans to go back to university. Um, what do we have here? That's hardware versus software. Listening about QUT, well, I'm studying applied math at the Russian uni, so do I have a chance to get in GAFA to as as ML engineer? Yeah, well, Alt Air two eight eight nine nine. Um, yeah, man, if you're studying applied mathematics, I, I don't even know what applied mathematics means. If I'm honest, right? I've I'm still a novice in this field. I I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny that, right? I'm still it's still day one for me, in my opinion. I've still got a lot to learn. Um, so if you're studying applied mathematics, I definitely know those skills. We actually just hired a, a mathematician and someone who's majoring in in physics, right? So at Max Kelson, so those skills are definitely in demand. Um, it's it's just about finding the right place for, for you and whether that be a big tech company because I know they are after them as well or a smaller tech company um, what what you really what what the gap is is okay you've got the applied mathematics skills what the gap is is contacting the right person because a lot of I think it's some don't quote me on percentages but just say it's easier to get a role somewhere if you know someone so how do you do that? Well, that's by building an online presence through online forums, forums like LinkedIn or your own blog and, and communicating your skills that you've learned. Because I have no doubt that if you're studying applied math, you're an incredibly smart person and you've got incredibly smart skills. But where the hard point is, is, is explaining those skills to people like me. So if I wanted to hire you and I'm looking for you, can I find you? Right. So that's why I think it's valuable to have an online presence of some sort, whether that be a website or whether that be a, um, a whatever, whatever it is, Facebook page or something like that, or a LinkedIn, LinkedIn or a website. They're, they're probably two of the best for this kind of industry. But if I'm looking for you, where can I find you? Because you can only apply to so many jobs. Right. So have an online presence and start practicing communicating your skills, why you're such why you're such an expert in in your field and why should i hire you another thing to do is is do something out of the box don't just don't just hand in resumes make a website if you really want a job at say facebook or google or or any company for that matter right make a website that's why google should hire daniel burke and obviously change the company for whatever you want and change your name for my name why should they hire you and then put some effort in that website and send the link to that website to a bunch of hiring managers at that company, right? I've never done that, but that sounds really cool if you can do it, if you can pull it off well. And it's better, in my opinion, than just emailing resumes by the dozen, 
Right? It shows that you, you really want to get in somewhere. And if you fail, try again. Um, here we go. Chan, Daniel, do you recommend Udacity Machine Learning Eng Engineering Nano Degree? Um, I recommend all of Udacity's courses. I've only done the, some of the free ones. I've done the Deep Learning Nano Degree and the Artificial Intelligence Nano Degree. But both are of world-class standard and um, they also have career services, which I haven't used yet because I, I got lucky and, and got a job without utilizing the career services. Um, so all of Udacity's courses are world-class if you, you apply yourself and get the most out of them. All of this stuff is, is about applying yourself and, and getting the most out of what you can. And if something doesn't work, that's okay. Remember that that didn't work. Go on to the next thing and, and figure out where your weak points are and make them stronger. If you if you you don't want to do that, find someone to, who's who's better than you at your weak points. Learn from them, or just forget about them entirely and go with what you're strong. But that was a kind of a diversion. Udacity's courses are all world class. Um, here we go. Where are we up to? We'll probably do two two to three more questions, and then and then we'll wrap this up because I gotta I gotta get some dinner in me, and then uh then I gotta have a I have a bath I've got running. I'm going to gonna chill out and read a book in there. I'm, I'm kind of excited for that, actually. Um, I think we are going to integrate with tech. Yep. Chris Barr, I really need to get up on that stuff. Yeah, you're right, finite investor. Alex, how confident are you in implementing machine learning algorithms from scratch? It's the hardest part for me. How's the applied um, data science with, with Python going? Oh, it's taken a hit, Alex. Python with applied data science with Python. Um, I've had a few things on this week, so it, it kind of held me back from, from getting to it. But next week, I'm going to be finished the first part for sure. There's no doubts about that. But I'm absolutely loving it. It's one of the best courses I've done so far. How confident am I implementing machine learning algorithms from scratch? Um, it depends, right? Because in, in practice, we, we haven't yet, I haven't yet had a situation that is working as a machine learning engineer, had a situation where I've had to go from straight zero, right? There's always been some foundation that we can build off. And why? It's because this field is so beautiful and the fact that everything is so uh, open source and so, so widely spread in terms of education. So we come across a problem and we go, okay, has this been worked on before? And most of the time it has, but if not, it might've been in a remixed version. And what I mean by that is, is similar but slightly different. So we can take those philosophies that someone's worked on on this problem and adapt them to our own. So it's not necessarily reinventing the wheel, but it's just it's just taking taking good work that's already been done and reshaping it in a way that serves us best. Um, so do I believe it's it's important to to be able to implement machine learning algorithms from scratch? It, yes, eventually. Um, but if you just want to get into things and start applying applying what you've learned, um, no. But it that that is good practice if you want to say um, get prepared for an interview or something like that. Uh, not that I know what what gets asked in a in a proper coding interview, um, but I've heard that that they may want you to sort of write something or or code something from scratch. But most of the time, if you can back yourself up and say hey, this is how I usually go about it. I look if someone else has implemented this and figure out a way to adapt this to our own problem, then to me, that's that's a good, that's a, as good a response, right? Um, because otherwise you're just memorizing algorithms from, from the start, but but it's it's a situational basis. Um, where are we at? What do you think about going to launch new AI startup for solving problem. Uh, Rishab Agag, I, Rish, Rishab, 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 what do I think about launch new AI startup for solving problem? Massive idea. Awesome. Awesome idea. Like if you, if you want to do it, go for it. What's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, my brother and I, we're going to, to, to try and start one in the next, in the next few months. Um, we want to use artificial, like computer vision for, for food recognition. Um, it might've been done before, but, but we, we want to work on it as a project, right? We built a, an Alexa skill yesterday. That, that was this project. There's going to be a video on that um, about health and fitness. So that's, that's using 
um, voice recognition on Alexa to to help people work out. So if you want to start an AI startup now, there's never been a better time to do it. And what's the worst case scenario? It doesn't work, or you learn and you can start another one, or you can you can share your experience and use it to to help you find a job somewhere. But yeah, going to launch a new AI startup, it's it takes a lot of courage, man. So so good luck. The final investor. I've started a YouTube channel. It's slow processing. Yeah. <laughs> It is a slow process, right? Um, go back to my first videos. I, I posted 30 videos of me sitting in my car just because I wanted to get started and I was talking. They all suck. I, I, don't, I don't mind having them up there. But all I, wanted, all I knew was that I wanted to get involved in YouTube, right? And I wanted to get involved in, in sharing my journey. And I, I knew I had to start somewhere. And eventually I got better over time. And, and my YouTube channel, my LinkedIn um, led me to get a job and... Um, the other day, I was speaking to a group of Chinese professors, which I'm still going to post the talk, but I'm waiting on the university to send me the, the video of the slides because a talk without a video of slides is not that great. Um, asked me to present. So was I out of my death? Probably a little bit, but I, I had the, the confidence to go up and say, hey, we're, we're working on this at Max Kelson. Um, so so that's the power of, of what an online profile can do for you. Um, one more question if we've got it here and then and then we're going to rock and roll but this has been awesome this has been great fun guys if you want send me a question whenever you like here we go um all right two questions programming with sid daniel uh, daniel do you think ai machine learning had the potential to take over every industry in the future well i'm biased but yes uh not take over augment Augment. I think it won't replace people directly for a while, but it will augment their workflow. What does that mean? It just means it will slightly shift it, right? Shift it to, to being something different. So if you imagine if, a, if an a mach AI won't necessarily fully replace uh, a doctor, like a general practitioner for a, for a while, okay? So it'll be a long time before you go, well, not a long, who knows? Who knows? I don't know these timelines, but it might even happen in the next 10 years depending on how technology goes. But in my eyes, I don't think, it, it, I think it'll be a while before you go in and you talk to a, a full-blown robot as a, as a general practitioner doctor. But for the, the next few years coming, um, there will be different tools and technologies such as machine learning and AI that will augment the workflows of, of existing people. So lawyers uh, will use machine learning to figure out whether or not they should take on a case right? Based on their previous case history, based on the other previous case histories of, of, of everyone else who's taken on similar cases, etc. Doctors will use machine learning and artificial intelligence on the data gathered from your fitness tracker to help treat you. Um, doctors, we're, we're, that's the exact same use case we want to work on, is using artificial intelligence to work out better diagnostic tools. Um, for, for different cancer treatments. So it won't necessarily replace people. It might in some things like driving or, or whatnot, but, but most things, it will simply just be another tool for those people to use um, in their day-to-day -day life. But it won't, it won't just, just be like, you don't have a job anymore straight away. Um, but that's why I think it's valuable to at least uh, learn about these skills, not, not in terms of... of of being able to code a machine learning algorithm step by step, but working out where can it be applied? Where might your work change in the future? Where, where can your industry use these technologies? That's where I think the most valuable, most value is. Um, amazing. Eh? Have you ever freelanced? I haven't, I haven't yet. Um, eh. I, I, I have looked into doing that in the future, but um, at the moment, all the jobs I've done in the past have been uh, on an hour, hourly rate. So Apple, I work part-time. Max Kelson, I'm working three days a week. Um, and, and of course, I want to start my own business and, and, and make money from my creative works, as in writing and, and, uh, and videography and, and whatnot. So that's, that's, that's in the pipeline, but I'm not in a rush. I'm having fun with what I'm doing now. Um, Answer this, please. All right, this will be the last question. How does someone from Edet, how, how can someone cope with depression? Oh, what a, what a tough question to take on for the last one, but that's all right. Let's do this. 
So I wrote an article. How does actually the question? Um, Adet Memcut, how can someone cope with depression? And now, um, of course, if you are suffering from depression, I'm not the probably not the best person to talk to, but I can just share with you what 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 I how I would approach it, right? And I'm I'm not a doctor, so I'm not gonna say that this is the the treatment or the diagnostic for 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 everyone. So just just bear with me, right? That's I'm not a I'm not a doctor. But depression. So let me share with you a little story. When I broke up with my girlfriend, it, it hit me hard, like really hard, because I'd never loved every anyone uh, more in my life, right? My first girlfriend, and we were together for two years. She was awesome. Never had really had an argument, and I was I was all the chips were in, right? So I, I just pushed over everything. She was it. She was number one. And then we broke up, and it sucked, and it was it rocked me really hard, right? And I was sort of like, well, what what is there to do anymore? I was really sad and just didn't want to do anything. Just still, still kept going to work and whatnot, but it sucked, right? It was just like, ah, this thought was always in my head. And then after writing like in a journal at night, 750words.com is the website I use literally every day as a journal, I figured it out. It was, I was so sad because I had pushed all my love out of myself into someone else, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I wasn't loving me. That that was what was making the sad feeling. Now, was it depression? I don't know. I never got diagnosed, but I would say if I went to a, a doctor, he might have, or the doctor might have just diagnosed me with, with depression because I was ticking all the boxes, right? Sad, didn't want to get out of bed, um, unmotivated, whatnot. And I figured after a while, hold on, I wasn't loving myself. Like I'd look in the mirror, I'd be like, I wasn't, I wasn't wholeheartedly with with me, right? I was playing hide and seek with myself. Like I was one part of me was over here doing things, and the other part was like screaming for attention, screaming for love. And it was only once I brought them two two together, I started listening to myself and going, Oh, this is the things that I want to do. This is what I want to work on. I don't want to be listening to to other people all the time. I want to I want to work on my own things. And it's not it's not her fault it wasn't anyone else's fault it was just just a just a thing that i had to get over and these little periods of of not feeling great still still happen and i think it's important to recognize um society society as a whole push that you should be happy you should be happy 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 all the time right and i know it's hard you can you can see people like youtube and instagram these these people are all amazing and my videos are high energy and all the other videos you watch are high energy Right, and I think that's that's great, but don't get me wrong. I still get these time periods of time where I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling that great. I just just don't feel like doing anything. But most of the time, when that happens, I'm not listening to myself. Right, I'm not talking to myself. I'm 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 fo too focused on on someone else's life. Right, even if it's even if it's not any other person, it's I'm living a life that is not true to the to the one inside me and it's very hard to explain but we all have a little voice in our head that this is who the person we want to be but when we disjoin from that when we stop listening from that i think depression is is another word for for deep rest it's your body just saying i need a rest from being this character you're trying to be so that you can realize that, that it's not the person you want to be. To me, that's what depression is. It's saying it's your body physically shutting down and just being like, I need to rest now because we're living a life that is very tiring and it's it, we're playing a character that is not us. Now, that's what, that's what depression is for me. Um, so how can you stop that? How can you stop that? It's very hard, right? But what's helped me a lot is going to 750words.com or journaling, writing down, writing down my thoughts as they come along. Why am I feeling like this? How, what's what's causing this? And most of the time you'll, you'll figure it out. Putting the problem down on, on paper is, 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 is like it's getting it out of your head and then you can see it in a different light. And then that's what helped me realize that I wasn't loving myself wholeheartedly. And then once you start to, to practice that, like loving yourself as a practice, as a book, there's a book I recommend for everyone is, is um, 
love yourself like your life depends on it, right? I wrote an article, right, that that, that book saved my life, which which it did, right? It saved not necessarily that I was I was thinking of of doing bad things, but in terms of 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 me not living the life I was supposed to be living. And who knows? Am I am I doing that right now? I, I think I am. I think I am on the path, right? Because that's that's why I have so much energy because I think I'm in a great place. I've married the voice in my head with what I'm doing in real life. And I, I, I think I'm just getting started with that. And it is a daily practice. And do not get me wrong. Happiness is is not like all, all the time. Even the, the most excited, exciting and happy people on earth still experience waves up and down. Happiness is like the tide, right? So to me, that's what depression is. It's a deep rest. It's your body saying, we're taking a deep rest from this character you're playing. You need to start listening to yourself more and and being this person that that you know you are inside because whatever we're doing in this outside world is not suiting us. So that was kind of long winded, but that that's my approach to it. And we, if you if you want to message anyone anytime, message me and I'll 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 be someone you can talk to. It's t dot me slash mr d burke. I don't have all the answers, but but man, I'm I'm happy to try and work these things out. I love these I love these conversations, but. We're going to wrap this up. It has been awesome. It has been 2,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. We're, we're just getting started with this. There's going to be plenty more videos to come. As I said, we're, we're all on this learning journey together. I make these videos to, to, to share my journey and to, to hear about yours, right? It's motivating. It's a circle. We're all in this together. We're all on the same path. We're all looking to, to better ourselves. So once again, Thank you so much. If you've got any more questions, leave a comment below. Otherwise, send me a message and we'll be back. We'll see you at 2,500 or 3,000, whenever, whenever, we, whenever we want. Whenever I've got a buildup of questions um, that I need to answer, we'll be back. Thank you all so much. And I love you. I'm going to go have a bath. Good night.